Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wish to uh, extend my gratitude to the Board of Supervisors for allowing us to present our FY22 funding request. Last spring, COVID forced schools across the nation to close their doors. The nature of this novel virus made a normal return to school this fall impossible. Stafford County staff worked long hours to continue to provide instruction, meals, and other critical supports for our students and families. Despite the challenges associated with COVID-19, we have continued to make progress in several educational initiatives and capital improvements. Four of our school cafeterias and 100 buses have been retrofitted with air conditioning. We have ongoing projects to complete at Ferry Farm due to construction delays. However, students finally entered the classroom for hybrid learning in late October. Work on the exterior envelope at North Stafford High School was started over the summer. We began a phased assessment and upgrade to our HVAC systems to, um, across the division to allow for greater air exchange and filtration for healthier schools. In addressing instructional needs, we purchased Chromebooks to provide one-to-one -one access for our county students. We expanded our library of online and virtual learning tools and created drive-through digital library services. We invested in ongoing professional development to help teachers develop virtual learning strategies and lesson plans. We offered one-time bonuses to full and part-time staff along with a 75% healthcare premium holiday to offset the raises that had to be withdrawn due to the economic uncertainty of COVID. We opened internet cafes in our schools for students challenged by the lack of broadband access, invested in extended learning opportunities, summer programming, PK through 12 literacy initiatives, and targeted interventions. We invested in technology, computers, cameras, and screens to meet the educational demands of concurrent learning and integrate in-person and virtual teaching for students in all 1,600 classrooms. We invested in COVID mitigation with personal protection, protective equipment, cleaning supplies, and 2,300 air purifiers were purchased for classrooms, offices, and common areas. We wish to, the success of Stafford County Public Schools is dependent on the continued collaboration with our community partners. We appreciate the support and the rapid response of the Board of Supervisors in allow, allocating CARES Act funding to help us move quickly in acquiring technology, including the Chromebooks for all students, and COVID resources, especially as we competed with districts across the nation for many of these materials. Thank you for quickly considering the transfer of health, our health savings funds for the one-time bonuses we were able to provide our teachers and staff. We recognize your efforts working with community partners to expand much needed internet access in our community. The Rappahannock Area Health Department has helped guide our decisions as we work towards returning all schools to our all children, students to our classroom. In partnership with Mary Washington Hospital, they provided vaccine clinics for our teachers and staff. Currently, 85% of our employees have received both vaccines. We wish to th extend, again, extend our thanks to all of our community partners. So the goals and priorities that we consider in our budget decisions in planning our budget, we utilize the continuous improvement model adopted by Dr. Kisner that puts the whole child at the heart of our considerations, integrating community partnerships, social, emotional, and physical development with tiered instructional support. With this approved budget, the Stafford County School Board seeks to achieve three main goals. We want to ensure that all students receive an excellent education built on high expectations with equity for all while meeting the social and emotional needs of our students. We need to attract and retain the best talent by investing in professional development, recruitment, and creating a sustainable competitive compensation scale that is flexible enough to adjust to economic conditions. We need to accommodate our growing student population so students in every grade experience an approach to instruction that focuses on the skills they need to succeed in life. Our instructional approach must continue to consider ongoing COVID mitigation and maintaining a virtual learning option for our students while planning for a post-COVID recovery to meet academic needs of our students that may have resulted from the public health crisis. From pre-kindergarten to 12th grade, we are focused on providing instruction that pre prepares our students for the modern world. This year's budget reflects a continuous commitment to prepare all Stafford County Public School students for the future workplace, known as the Virginia Profile of the Graduate, or five C's, 
This budget request supports our professional learning and curriculum resources to support creative and critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and citizenship. What makes Stafford County Public Schools unique is that social, emotional learning and wellness are also prioritized along with our ongoing focus on equity. In accord with the Virginia Department of Education, we seek to ensure that every graduate is able to achieve and apply academic knowledge, align that knowledge and skills and personal interests for career opportunities, attain and demonstrate productive workplace skills, value and build connections with diverse communities, and understand personal civic responsibility. This year, we welcomed 1,840 kindergartners. On April 1st, we began our enrollment for kindergartners for the 21-22 school year. We expect this new class could exceed, exceed our expectations. Our kindergartners from Kate Waller Barrett, Conway, Hartwood, Rock Hill, and Widewater Elementary Schools were the first to pilot our hybrid instruction plan. These student help, students helped us plan and implement the logistics of bringing students back into the classroom. This year, 2,247 students will graduate from our high schools, and our class of 2022 currently has 2,304 students. In preparing our students for the future workplace, we offer over 70 CTE programs in addition to dual enrollment, international baccalaureate, advanced placement, and the Commonwealth Governor's School. This year, 14 of our high school students completed their training in our newest CTE program, and two were among 22 recruits who became full-fledged members of the Stafford County Fire and Rescue. Last year, Chief Joseph Cordello invited members of the Board of Supervisors and School Board to participate in a training exercise with our high school recruits. I was happy to participate and excited to see the rigorous training and dedication of our students. In addition to our academic mission, our fleet of buses drive 68,000 miles a week, transporting students in multiple runs to accommodate reduced seating due to the social distancing restrictions, delivering learning packets, meals, and some of our drivers have stepped up to help monitor our internet cafes. Stafford County Public Schools also serve 65,000 meals every week, and in the past year, our staff and teacher volunteers served over 1.5 million meals to students and their families. This has been a remarkable school year with many challenges, and we continue to adapt, refine our procedures, assess, adapt, and refine our procedures to safely return more students for face-to-face -face learning. Currently, 61% of elementary, 50% of middle school, and 46% of our high school students are enrolled in a hybrid le learning option. To address the sudden closure of our schools last spring, we offered a virtual summer program that enrolled 1,289 elementary schools, or elementary students, and 364 middle schoolers. At high school, students had 349 new credit completions and 301 repeat credit completions. Additionally, we offered voluntary recovery learning modules at the middle and high school, where students voluntarily completed nearly 1,500 modules. Students returned to in-person hybrid classes at Rising Star and North Star on August 31st. English learners returned to middle school and high school on the same day, while ESOL students in elementary school followed two weeks later. As we recover from COVID, we will continue to address any learning loss through personalization, remediation, and acceleration with expanded learning opportunities, continued professional development, and by addressing the social and emotional wellness of our students and staff. To fully appreciate our budget request, we must address the forces that impact it. Growth, turnover, and compensation continue to be a stress on our budget. Whoops. To fully appreciate our budget request, we address the forces that impact its schools, our infrastructure, and personnel intensive endeavors. Stafford County Public Schools oversees 36 buildings constructed between 1931, the Melchers Complex, and 2019, Moncure Elementary School. Schools are equipped with athletic fields, tracks, stadiums, libraries, fine arts centers, and increasingly technology. We have a fleet of 253 buses with over 4,300 employees. We are the second largest employer in Stafford County. Growth continues to exert pressure on our division. Stafford is the second fastest growing county with the second highest per capita student enrollment behind Loudoun. 
we continue to grapple with turnover and recruitment in an extremely competitive job market for teachers. Not only do we confront a decrease in the number of students pursuing education preparatory programs, leaving us competing for fewer entry-level teachers, but we see many of our mid-year teachers depart for economic reasons in the higher pay scales of our northern Virginia neighbors. This puts pressure on all positions, but most adversely affected our special education and secondary math. Compensation remains a critical issue in the recruitment and retention of our staff. We have struggled with our license and uniform salary scales for years. The Board of Supervisors supported our two-year efforts in bringing the service sector up to the entry point of the market, but compensation for our licensed staff lags our competition. We understand the Board recognizes the importance of addressing this issue as they sought to do by increasing the compensation scale for public safety and county employees. Our students, COVID has impacted student membership across the Commonwealth. There was an average decrease in student membership of 3.1% in Virginia. Locally, this impact was 2.1%. We expect that once schools can enroll for full-time face-to-face learning, many of the students not currently attending Stafford County Public Schools will return. Our projected ADM our average daily membership will approach 30,000 students by the end of 2022. In fact, we could see a rapid influx in our ADM once our schedule returns to full time. We have a very diverse student population. Stafford, while the white students remain the largest single block, we are a majority minority student population. Over 89 languages are represented in our schools. Before COVID altered our lives, I had the opportunity to attend the cultural fair at Rocky Run Elementary School. There I could see a broad cross section of our diverse student body sharing their cultures, dance, music, food, and history. Our students demonstrated and embodied the ideal that our diversity is our strength. As you can see, over the past four years, we've had an increase in the population, 4% increase in the population of economically disadvantaged students. Currently, this represents one third of our student population. However, as we recover from COVID and assess the needs of our students, we must be aware that the economic impact of this crisis has likely affected many students and families in our community. Stafford County Public Schools, like other district divisions across the nation, see a steady increase in the number of students with disabilities. 14% of our student population, or about 4,100 students. These numbers are consistent with national and state averages. Our charge is to provide all students with a quality education. To help ensure that we are achieving this goal and comply with state requirements, we have added a supervisor of compliance to our pers support personnel in this budget. Also over the past four years, we have seen a threefold increase in the number of students with 504 plans. These plans are designed to remove barriers to learning that give students equal access at school. To address this increase, last year we hired a 504 coordinator to our support staff who has made recommendations for five administrative support positions that are included in the FY22 budget. Currently, 9.4% of our student population, about 2,700 students, are identified as English learners. These numbers also comport with state and national data. Marcos came to Stafford County Public Schools in second grade. In the months before leaving his native country, Honduras, he was witness to his father's murder on a public bus. Desperate to provide a safe life for her son, his mother sent him to live with relatives in the United States. With little to no English, he arrived here and joined a family he barely knew. In his first days at school, he cried often and clung to his Spanish-speaking ESOL teacher. He was terrified to leave her side and participate in a class where he understood little of what was being said. His teacher became a fierce advocate for Marcos, collaborating with other teachers and staff throughout the building on how to best lower his anxiety and build his English fluency. He is now a successful middle schooler. Marcos' English ESOL teacher is responsible for helping him overcome his fear and not only survive, but thrive in his school as a scholar and leader. The academic needs coupled with the social-emotional weight that Marcos carried are some of the barriers that English language teachers face when helping their students. It is a multifaceted role that is often made 
much, much more than providing language instruction. Our English language teachers make certain all their students have equitable access to the curriculum they serve as advocates for their students, and sometimes they are the lifeline for their English language students in navigating our schools. The growth in these higher needs student populations means that Sta but Stafford County is proud to offer all students an excellent education built on high expectations with equity for all. Increases in students with IEPs, 504 plans, and our English learners require a commitment to professional staff and resources. As we've said, growth continues to put pressure on Stafford County Public Schools. We have worked to develop met better methods to plan for enrollment needs and to assess and track our construction, repair, replacement, and revitalization requirements. These heat map projections of seat availability from our enrollment accommodation plan fade from dark green to bright red. Dark green indicates less than 90% um, design capacity, with red being greater than 105% for our elementary school, middle school, and high school by the 2024-25 school year. At that point, 12 of our 17 elementary schools will be projected at 100% capacity or greater. Half of our middle schools will be at 95% capacity or greater, and all five of our high schools will be greater than 90% capacity. Stafford County is the second largest growing county in the state with the second highest number of children per capita, stressing the need for our continued investment in our schools. We look forward to the completion of High School 6 and alleviating the stress on existing high schools, but recognize that this also amplifies our need for the recruitment of talented teachers, staff, and administration at a time when competing divisions are also adding new schools. Both Prince William and Loudoun have new high schools slated to open within the next two to four years. Turnover of licensed staff remains a stress. While in 2020, we were fortunate to see a decline in the number of licensed staff opting to leave Stafford County. However, we cannot be certain how this will be impacted in a post-COVID world. It is likely this may have been an artifact related to the uncertainty of changing jobs during a pandemic. Last year, the division lost 300 licensed personnel. Our teachers are leaving for Northern Virginia. Our competition is with Northern Virginia school divisions. Compared to Spotsylvania, 60% of our staff left for Prince William, while two and a half times or 250% left for Northern Virginia schools. We struggle with the combined impact of fewer qualified graduates from education preparatory programs and a depressed pay scale to Northern, compared to Northern Virginia schools. The pressure of our division on the recruitment and retention of licensed personnel, salaries, for licensed staff lag behind other professions available to college graduates and those switching careers. There have been a 30%, 31% decrease in enrollment and an 18% decrease in completion of education preparatory programs statewide since 2014. Our current scale is not calibrated to the sources of competition for experienced teachers. 22% of our licensed staff who self-report cite economic reasons as a factor in their decision. This increases to 26% for mid-career teachers. In evaluating our teacher scale, we found early to mid-career teachers are most negatively impacted. Our biggest investment in the development of our licensed staff occurs in the first five years of their employment at an estimated cost of $10,000. Most of the departures we witness are either early career teachers who leave the profession entirely or those with five to 15 years experience who leave for economic reasons. Currently, we have 76 vacancies. As you can see, the neighboring divisions cap outside experience at 15 years. We find that our mid-career licensed staff is more likely to leave at the top of this scale, which is where salary gaps with Stafford County Public Schools and Northern Virginia divisions are the largest. At an entry level, that gap is 4,700. By five years, that gap widens to almost double at 9,000. And at 15 years, the gap is nearly three times, or 20, uh, nearly $22,000, almost triple what it is at five. We face similar pressures on our uniform salary scale, which represents about a quarter of our workforce. Over the past two years, we brought all service sector employees to the minimum of the adopted pay scale for their position. 
However, many, if not most of our staff are compressed at or near the minimum of the pay scale when adjusted for years of experience. To remain competitive, we seek to bring our employees to the midpoint of the scale and eliminate that compression. So to put our school funding in context, in order to maintain our core mission of providing all students with an excellent education with equity for all that meets the instructional needs of each student in compliance with the portrait of a VA graduate, we implement a comprehensive mo compensation model that helps us attract, develop, and retain the workforce. We invest in strategies that aid our recruitment and, intention and retention. We expand learning opportunities for students and staff meet the social and behavioral needs of our students. And at least in the near term, we must maintain our COVID mitigation strategies as well as our virtual learning opportunities. Our proposed salary scale is designed to raise the entry level to attract new talent and compete with the relevant divisions. This adjustment to the teacher scale includes a 5% raise based on the government's, governor's proposed budget that recognizes the loss of raises in 2021 and adjusts this year's salaries. This proposal offers a phased in approach to a sustainable, predictable compensation scale that can react to changes in economic conditions that we believe will help us attract and retain the best talent. As you can see on this graph, we have at the bottom of the scale is our current um, teacher's compensation. The dark blue line above it represents our proposed um, first year FY22 adjustment. Um, the red line is the Northern Virginia schools, um, the three year, the three division average, and at the top is a weighted average, which uh, stresses that Prince William, which has a much higher scale, counts for about 63% of that adjustment. Um, Prince, our, Fairfax, I'm sorry, accounts for 29% and um, Spotsylvania about 8%. In addition to our, pros, our proposed adjustment to the, our compensation scale, we want to expand our existing program for tuition assistance and offer educational loan support as both a tool for recruitment but also as an investment in the development of our workforce. We are also attempting to bring our service sector scale to the midpoint of the market in line with changes made in the county level in order to ensure that pay scales remain relevant to the comparison markets and we can retain our experienced workforce. As you can see, this current salary show little growth relative to entry level positions and we propose raising these scales to the midpoint in conjunction with the 5% increase in the governor's budget with all service employees that adjust the these adjustments align with credit, offers credit for the years of experience to eliminate the compression. If you look at the graph, you can see the bottom line represents our current pay scale um, and the x-axis being the years of service and the y-axis being the salary scale, the hour, hourly scale. Um, for the most part, our staff, our service sector, this is the paraprofessional model, shows that from one to about 14 years, there's very little change in the scale. We're proposing an additional 60 staff positions to meet current mandates, growth, and offer the best programs and services to our students. In addition to 18 teachers, six classroom paraprofessionals, we are adding eight counselors. This will comport with state standards of quality that require a one to 325 ratio. We're adding a psychologist, 6.6 .6 social workers. The state is now requiring an increase in support personnel in our schools. We're adding two work-based learning coordinators as an example of our budget proposal that specifically addresses the profile of a graduate requirements for the upcoming year in the position to support work-based learning experiences for all students in grades nine through 12. To maintain and ensure our technology while providing online learning, we are adding network technicians and, an online, and two online learning coordinators. Last year, we withdrew staff positions in finance and human resources that we have added back into this budget. These staff positions are a critical support for hiring qualified teachers and improving instructional programs that support our educational mission. Our operational funding. Here we examine 
we compare Stafford County per pupil expenditures to that of other nearby divisions. Available data from 2019. The solid line indicates both the state average, the top line 12,496, and the median, the state median 11,748. Stafford County continues to lag behind regional divisions in our per pure pupil expenditure. This budget for Stafford County Public Schools has continued to grow over the past decade in response to the demands of a growing student population and to meet the needs of our educational mission, as well as state and federal requirements. We continue to address structural issues with our salary scales while focusing our main mission, providing all students with an excellent education. Numerous resources are dedicating to maintaining our capital infrastructure. Most of our funding continues to come from the state. The fact the gap between the state and local share has continued to widen over the past decade. It is important to remember that Virginia funding formulas ensure that increases from state go to every division. It is the local contribution that determines how competitive we are relative to other divisions in Virginia. The funding request would provide 56.6% of our budget comes from the state and 41% from county sources. The governor has proposed a no-loss ADM. We anticipate a 4% increase in state funding to $7.5 million. We see no change in federal investment or other miscellaneous revenue at this time. The Stafford County School Board is requesting $12.3 million or 9.6%. It is a bold but critical budget request. It fully funds the compensation scale of our service sector employees and begins putting our licensed staff on a sustainable, competitive compensation scale that will help us attract and retain talented people. It addresses demands of our growing student population. Currently, there is a $4.6 million deficit between the school board's request and the county administrator's proposed budget. It is important to remember that 85% of our budget goes to salary and benefits while well, 76% covers instruction, and over 70% of our workforce live and work in Stafford County. If this budget is fully funded, Stafford's per pupil expenditure is still lower than either the state, average, or the median. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to present this budget request, and I wish to express my thanks to Mr. Fulmer, Dr. Towery, and others who helped develop the FY22 budget. I will be happy.